hello, and thanks for joining me. One of the things I've always loved about hosting this television show and hosting my radio show years ago is that when I'm out about in the world and I'm talking with people in ordinary life, everyday life, I meet someone with an interesting story and I can invite them to come here and share that story with all of you. The same is true when I read something in the news or see it in social media or see a film. Last weekend, I watched a movie called Jerry and Marge Go Large, and I absolutely loved it. I loved it while I was watching it. I went to sleep thinking about the movie. I woke up thinking about the movie. So I reached out to Jerry and Marge Selby, who the film is based on, in their small town in Michigan. And lo and behold, <laughs> I got a hold of Jerry, and he was gracious enough to agree to come on this show today. And I could tell you all about the movie, but we're going to show the trailer in just a moment. It's a feel-good film, and to me, it's about never knowing where the gifts we have can take us. And in this case, Jerry and Marge took their community and their family along with them. Take a look, and when we come back from the trailer, I'll introduce you to Jerry. Everybody, to Jerry. Not everybody can pull off 42 years without getting fired. Jerry, you don't have to work so hard. You're retiring. I don't have to be. These are your golden years. How's my account? 2% gains. You just got to be more aggressive. I could double your money in 7.27 years. Literally, the only time I was going to get to use that today. Jerry, you're going to have to tell me what's going on. I was always good with math, codes, puzzles, you name it, but I just feel like I never got to be a part of the world. I found this flaw. There's a loophole that the lottery didn't see. It's right here in the math. I don't know what this says. It looks like the numbers of crazy man drew in a cell wall. I cannot believe you are my accountant. I'm playing the lottery, and I won $15,000. Why didn't you just tell me? We barely have enough money to retire on. This is no time to risk it. Yes, it is. What? Can I help you? We'd like to buy 8,000 windfall tickets. I'm going to help you first. $312,000. <gasps> what now? You want to start a corporation. We'll split the profits with the whole town. The more we bet, the better the odds. Let's do it. There's another group. These kids figured it out. The payout should have been bigger. We're really hurting each other by playing at the same time. I beat you out of the game. We're not done. Do you know what the dark web is, Jerry? Because it's going to be the only place to buy your life back when I'm done selling it to countries that you can't even pronounce. I'm going to do it to everyone in your group. The lottery suspended our license. We're betting half a million. Go big or go home. It really does feel like we're robbing a bank. Nah, this is gonna be more fun. We are betting $40,000 on windfall tickets. Are you guys drug dealers? We're professional lottery players. That isn't a thing. It is now. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Jerry. I am so excited to talk to you after watching Jerry and Marge Go Large. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Just like that, I had to call you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Well, I want to dive deep. So we know that Hollywood isn't always truth when they tell the story of someone. It's based on a true story. So I did a lot of research to try to compare what was true in the movie and what is true to your real life. And then we chatted a little bit before we got started here. But I want to go all the way back to your beginning. You uh, are in a small town in Michigan, and you've had a varied career path, but you started out with your degree in mathematics from Western Michigan University, correct? Uh, that's for my bachelor's degree. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. And so tell me about that. I don't have a brain that works mathematically at all. <laughs> and I am fascinated by the brilliance that is displayed through the movie of your ability to figure out so many things that most people would overlook. That's why you were so successful at the lottery, at the windfall lottery, but we'll get to that. Let's talk about just when you were getting that degree and you were starting out in the world, what did you think you would do with the skill you had in mathematics? 
I didn't really know what I would do. Uh, it just, I was always good with numbers and uh, I was always um, and fascinated with, with mathematics. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. The, at the time I got my degree, which was in 1966, I was working full time and going to school part time because we had a family then. You had you had kids already. Yes. Okay. So you have six children. The movie says you have two, but you have six. So we don't want to leave the other four out from this conversation. And it starts off, I won't give a whole lot away, but you know, the movie is a feel good movie about um, you and your wife playing and winning the lottery and bringing your whole community with you. So what I wanted to know, first of all, it starts out with you cracking a code when you worked at Kellogg's and they depicted that you were retiring from Kellogg's, which will tell the truth. You didn't uh, as we move along through the story, but you did work there and you did crack that code 61 years ago, you told me in our emails. So tell tell us about that. Um, that was, that was essentially in at the time I was working in packaging development and each year, Kellogg's would get competitors' packages and Kellogg's packages sent in from the sales reps all over the country. And then I would do moisture checks on those packages to see uh, who was uh, protecting their product better. And uh, I was able to compare General Mills moisture levels of their products with Kellogg's comparable products like uh, Wheaties with Pep and and Cheerios with OKs, that type of thing. And uh, I looked at the code that General Mills used, which was a couple of series of letters and numbers. And I was able to compare the moistures and then determine the code compared to Kellogg manufacturing dates and uh, come up with the uh, actual manufacturing dates of the General Mills products as well. They don't do that today. They put the, they put the dates on today. Um, but at that time, they did have their own code. So you... You had an interest in figuring things like this out, noticing those kinds of details. So, That's true. That's so correct. let's let's get into um, let's get into the lottery piece of it. So you owned, uh, you worked in pharmaceutical sales, and then your you and your wife owned a convenience store for several years. So you were familiar. Tell us about your familiarity with the machines that were in your store for lottery ticket sales. Well, we. Uh... We operated those machines every day um, to sell lottery tickets in the state of Michigan, of course. And uh, so we were familiar with the machines, and I was familiar with all the lottery games and the structure of the games. And, and so uh, we could uh, help our customers <laughs> buy tickets and determine maybe whether whether they could win or whether they couldn't and so on and so forth. So yours is probably the store people wanted to buy from. Um, we, we sold quite a few, yes. <laughs> so you, we sold a lot, of, a lot of instant tickets and we sold online tickets as well. So when you had, uh, when you, the, the lottery that you participated in that the film is based on was actually in Massachusetts. So... Michigan started it. Okay, so Michigan, that's what I was going to ask. Where did, how did you leap from Michigan to Massachusetts? So it started there. Well, okay, in Michigan, I started playing uh, the Windfall Lottery in 2003. They terminated the game in May of 2005. And at that time, I had some players. Well, I had a corporation and I had members in the in the corporation, one of which was a um, was a plant manager at uh, one of the Minute Maid Foods in Michigan, 
and he uh, was originally from Massachusetts. And when when uh, Michigan terminated the game, he emailed me. By the way, I've never met him. To this day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I wouldn't recognize him today if I if I saw right. him. He emailed me and he said uh, Massachusetts has a lottery called similar called cash windfall. Do you think we could play that? And so I got online and I checked it out and I got back with him and I told him uh, we could play it. And the chances are it would be profitable for us. Did he have any connections with any convenience stores on the western side of Massachusetts? And so he gave me Billy's Beverages in Sunderland, Massachusetts. And that's how we started in Sunderland. Okay, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to find out about those first couple of years when you formed the corporation. And so much of your story was there was a, the focus was on community and bringing people with you and not being greedy and making sure you spread the wealth. So we'll come back in just a moment. We're talking with Jerry Selby. This movie is based on his life. He and Marge, Jerry and Marge go large. We'll be back in just a moment. We are back talking with Jerry Selby. The movie Jerry and Marge Go Large is based on your life and your playing of the lottery and winning big and taking people along with you. So let's talk about back in 2003 is when you started playing, uh, when you started playing in Michigan, correct? Correct. Okay. So you, in the movie, they show that you're taking money and you're playing pretty big. How big were those first bets that, that Marge wasn't quite aware of yet? <laughs> well, the first bet I made uh, after I figured out uh, the statistics, the first bet I made was $2,200, and I lost $50. That's it. That's correct. And the movie shows that I lost 100 and some dollars, but actually I lost 50 So uh, I immediately knew that I didn't play enough to compensate for the variance of uh, what really could happen compared to the probability of the numbers um, the way they should. So my next play was $3,400, and I got back $6,300. Then the movie shows that my next play was 8000 which is accurate, okay. and I got back $15,700, which is accurate. And that's when Marge got in on it. That's when I told Marge what I was doing. That's correct. And so she, you explained it to her, and she caught on right away. Yeah. You, yeah, she And so you started. Yeah, and me, I don't know why. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a good thing. So then from there, tell me what happens. Uh, From there, we continued to play in Michigan. And uh, statistically, I had calculated that we had an 85% chance of of winning and a 15% chance of losing. And we played until May of 2005 before Michigan terminated the game. We played... 12 times, we lost twice, and we won 10. So when, when we lost, lost and won, you're buying multiple tickets. So are you talking that's about correct. ratio of win to lose? Because you didn't lose everything, right? That's correct. We lost, when we lost, we lost 80% of what we played Okay. in Michigan. Um, and that's when you formed the corporation and involved your community? I formed that corporation on my fourth play, and that's when I started in, inviting uh, members of the community as well as my family, mm-hmm. children, to start uh, joining if they wish. So now, were there people who were thinking, ah, uh, this sounds too good to be true? Oh, you had a good <laughs> reputation in town, but at first, first you might lose their word. Okay. And so... I had... I got to tell you, I had one player that I played cards with. Uh-huh. 
And he said, you are going to jail. And you're going to go to jail. And I said, I was doing nothing illegal. Right. And he said, I don't believe it. You're going to jail. Well, about the fourth time that we played, he said, can I join? <laughs> we the truth is there, right? And, and what the truth is, is that the lottery commission, whatever it would be called, if that's what it's called, you, they were making money off of what you were doing and you weren't breaking the law. So it went on for years. How long did you See, play? We played from uh, January 2003 until January 2012. Wow. And we played six or seven times a year. Tell me, and you had to drive to Massachusetts, just as the film depicted, and you had to place these bets, and it took a long time. Was that exaggerated, or was that part no, of your it, job? <laughs> it, took, it took a long time. We could uh, we could only print about $12,000 worth of tickets per hour. Mm-hmm. And so with her and I both printing, we could uh, do $24,000 worth per hour. And when you're playing a half a million dollars or more, it takes a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And did you really keep all the losing tickets in case you got audited? Absolutely did. <laughs> that part of the movie is true, and we put them in plastic tubs just like the movie showed. Right. That's absolutely true. We had about 30 of those tubs. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that wasn't true in the film, thank goodness, I know it was uh, Harvard students, and actually there were MIT students playing it, started as a project, but they made it look like they treated you awfully, and I'm so glad to know that wasn't true. I was angry through the movie thinking that that was true, and that would be one of my first questions to ask you about, and good, good to know that you were each playing at the same time, and it didn't really affect your ability to win after all, or did it? No, no. What it didn't affect the ability to win. What it did do is lower the payout for both of them. Yeah, and the film. Just for clarification to the audience, they, they, everyone needs to see this film. But they, may, there's a group of Harvard students that are trying to muscle you out of of the game so that they can win bigger. And that part isn't true. But it was true that there was a set of MIT students who were playing as you were playing. But nobody was threatening anyone. <laughs> so that's good to know. That's right. <laughs> well, let's take one more quick break and we come back. I just want to hear about the community aspect and all the people who benefited from your from your brilliance. It's brilliance. I know you think it's not, but it is. We'll be back in just a moment. I'm talking with Jerry Selby. The movie Jerry and Marge Go Large is based on uh, your story, yours and Marge's story of winning the Massachusetts lottery over and over and over and over again and with the windfall game, cash windfall game. What was the grand total, and mentioning that you brought everyone in with the corporation, what was the grand total that all of you won combined in playing this? And then you just... Uh I should tell you that we never won the jackpot. Yes, correct. The entire strategy was that nobody would win the jackpot. I only had a 3% chance of winning. Uh, The structure of my corporation and and our thoughts were that nobody would win the jackpot. And if that were true, we could make money. That's correct. We did we did fine without it. As long as nobody else won, we all did fine. Yeah, gotcha. Total winnings was uh, about twenty seven million dollars gross and about uh, right in around nine million dollars net. Wow. And talk about how that impacted your community. In the movie it shows how you different people were doing things to restore the community and restore downtown and restore the jazz festival. How much of that was accurate? Were people spending their money, some of it, and collectively to improve your community there in your small town? Uh, No, that was the the members of the community um, helped their family. Yes. I had one one member that put two, uh, two children through college including one become a lawyer. Mm-hmm. 
um, I had members create a fund for their grandchildren. Yes. And uh, I had members improve their houses, their homes, and things like that. But as far as uh, building something that was not available in the community itself, we did not do that. That was part of the movie. And when you're looking back at this, and now, you know, this has been years since, and there was an article in the Huffington Post. That's how everyone started to finding, finding out about your story. That was one of the articles. That's the one that I found out about. When Hollywood comes knocking, what are you thinking at that point? Are you reluctant? Are you, are you excited? How, how did you feel about that? Flattered. Yeah. I bet. Yeah, just flattered. Um, I always had in the back of my mind, mind because Marge and I are just common people in a small town that uh, were retired, that it would be completely unexpected of what we were able to do. Uh, I always I always thought in the back of my mind that would make a movie, but I never believed that that would come true. Uh-huh. Well, and there are people who work really hard to to make their story a movie, and it doesn't happen. So they came to you. And how did you feel about the choices, Annette Benning and Brian Cranston, to play you and your wife? <laughs> uh, we, we were quite a, quite flattered, actually, yeah. when we looked at their backgrounds. Right. Um, we were impressed. We were pleased. It was such a good story, too. I feel like um, we never really know, like, we, we, are all, we are all born with gifts, and we can't necessarily know how we'll use those gifts. And for you to use them for the good that you did, uh, what, do you, what is the lesson you think? All these years later, and all the hoopla and the movie and all the things that have happened, what's your biggest takeaway about that time in your life? And what it kind of represents of for people who think they don't know what to do with the things they they know how to you know like your mathematics skills who who knew that this is how you would use that skill? Uh, we were just I was just pleased and and tickled that I was able to uh, figure something out and have it work as it should. I know in Massachusetts, we played uh, 43 times. We only lost once. That's incredible. It's really incredible. Well, I'm so excited to have been able to spend this time with you and our emails back and forth. And, I, and I'm glad that you were able to get on Zoom and have this conversation. And um, please tell Marge hello for me. I didn't get to meet her today, but uh, I just have such respect for the for what you accomplished together and in your community and how it was shared. So I just wish you both the best as you go on in your lives. And who knows what, who uh, will ever know, who knows what lies ahead. You just never know. Thank you, Lisa. I sure appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much.